Uh, good morning, everyone. It is really a pleasure to join you today for this very, very important announcement on improving cooling in long-term care homes. There has been a lot of speculation about this topic. And I'm pleased to say that residents and staff in long-term care will be comfortable and cool this summer. Our government's top priority throughout this pandemic has been the health and safety of Ontarians. This is especially true when it comes to vulnerable populations like our loved ones living in long-term care. And as all Ontarians know, we can have hot summers in Ontario. Without a proper air conditioning system, the summer heat can become uncomfortable very quickly. For a long-term care home without proper air conditioning, the summer heat is not only uncomfortable, but it is a health risk. That's why in April of this year, we updated regulations under the Long-Term Care Homes Act to require that all designated cooling areas in Ontario's long-term care homes have air conditioning by May 15th, 2021. To be clear, this is the first time that air conditioning has been mandated in Ontario's long-term care homes. Ontario has invested over $105 million to help homes not only meet the new regulations and provide air conditioning in designated areas, but to exceed the new rules and where possible, provide cooling throughout the building, including in resident rooms. The new regulations came into effect May 15th, and I'm happy to announce that all 626 long-term care homes, all 626 homes have informed us that they are in compliance. Last year, nearly 13% or 79 long-term care homes had no air conditioning at all. This summer, the residents of those 79 homes will be able to keep cool during hot summer months. This is a major achievement and a huge improvement for the sector. Not only have we made strides in ensuring that all homes have air conditioning in designated cooling areas, but the number of homes that are fully air conditioned, including resident rooms, has also increased substantially. Last year, only 42% of homes provided air conditioning throughout the home. Today, that number is up to 60% and growing. An additional 23% of homes, or 145 homes, are currently working towards being fully air conditioned as soon as possible. This means that at least 83% of homes will have full air conditioning by this summer. This is great news for our loved ones in long-term care across this province. Because of our improved regulations, investments, and our work with our partners across the sector, long-term care residents, staff, and caregivers will be able to keep cool this summer. Today's announcement is another example of our commitment to fixing long-term care in Ontario. We are committed to building a sector that provides safe, comfortable, and modern spaces for our loved ones. Thank you. Okay, so we'll go to the media for questions. Just a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. First question goes to Jeff Outhit from the Waterloo Region Record. Please go ahead. I'm sorry, Minister, can you hear me okay? Certainly can. Yes, okay. Uh, I spoke to a family yesterday. This is about visitations and long-term care and the new policies that you announced. I spoke to a family yesterday that drove hundreds of kilometers to see their loved one. The outdoor visit fell apart over the weather. Uh, they're frustrated that fully vaccinated people cannot visit fully vaccinated residents in long-term care. Everybody involved in this is fully vaccinated, including the visitors and the resident in long-term care. And they're also frustrated that there are only two designated essential caregivers. Uh, and uh, this family member falls outside that. So she hasn't seen her mother in a year and a half. She still can't see her mother. She's fully vaccinated. Her mother's fully vaccinated. It's very frustrating for her. So I'd like to ask you, can you defend your government's policy not to allow fully vaccinated people to visit fully vaccinated people and also to limit the number of essential caregivers who can visit inside a home? So thanks for the question, Jeff. First of all, in my, my heart goes out to everyone who's been separated by this uh, really vicious virus, COVID-19. 
And that's why we've we tried to strike a balance to make sure the well-being, the emotional and psychological well-being of residents and their family members uh, um, are balanced with the, the cautious approach that we need to take, especially with the virus, uh, the variants that are out there. And, and so our, our change in policy was to allow for outdoor visits. It was to include um, two essential caregivers and two general visitors. And it was to be held outside where it was deemed to be safest. And these decisions are made um, with our chief medical officer of health and, and public health input. Uh, so, so these are not made in isolation. Um, we're, we're really trying to strike that balance and we know how hard it is on families. The fully vaccinated uh, residents and fully vaccinated uh, caregivers can even have um, close contact, including hugs. And so this is something that we have implemented. However, we still have to remain cautious. Some of the variants are very transmissible and uh, we are taking a, a graduated approach to this. Understanding the emotional um, well-being is, is just, just as important as physical well-being. One follow-up question. Do you, have any sense, do you have any sense of the timeline as to when you might relax, particularly on the fully vaccination and allow not just designated caregivers, but family, general family members who are not essential caregivers to visit indoors? Well, we're aligning with the, you know, the staged approach to opening of the province. We think that that's very important. Uh, we want to make sure that our, our uh, staff are vaccinated and we're making sure that those, those homes are, are getting education materials to encourage all staff to be vaccinated. We know that that is the safest way uh, for our, our homes to operate as well as for the province to open up. So I really encourage everyone uh, to get vaccinated and uh, make sure that uh, they're following the public health guidelines. Uh, this is something that we will align um, uh, our, our gradual uh, reopening to visitors with the, uh, the stepped approach to the province. Thank you very much, Minister. Appreciate you taking these questions. Thanks, Jeff. The next question comes from Linda Ward of CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi there, Minister. Can you hear me okay? I certainly can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just uh, when you refer to uh, designated cooling areas uh, in these homes, I'm, I'm um, assuming that that is uh, hallways and, and living spaces, but not uh, resident rooms. Uh, why not require these homes to put air conditioning in resident rooms? Well, there's many factors for this. And of course, I want to make sure that everyone understands that this has never been done before in long-term care. This is really a commitment by our government to bring these homes uh, into a modern era, era where people can be comfortable during the summer. Um, and so this is a, a, a very, very important commitment for our government. And I'm pleased to say that 100% of homes are in compliance with the regulatory requirement uh, to have the designated cooling areas, 60% have it uh, throughout the homes, including in um, the resident rooms. Uh, there are 20% more that are working on this. It does take some time, especially during you know, COVID uh, pandemic times, a little, little longer. Um, but we understand the importance of making sure that staff and, and uh, residents are kept cool. There's many uh, factors to be taken into consideration. As you know, the age of the homes has been problematic. Um, there are instances where homes have had to um, uh, have repairs. And so that might be a temporary um, uh, uh, blip for those homes, but they need to get back on track and we'll be monitoring this with inspections and, and the homes will be required to provide us with information on their progress. We're, we're, we're hearing stories of, you know, the homes uh, that have put in the, these cooling systems in uh, areas that are uh, common areas, uh, but the rooms are still, you know, 27 degrees and very humid. Um, and by this, the release that's gone out today, it's, uh, you know, as you say, 60% of homes fully air conditioned, including resident rooms, an additional 23% of homes working toward being fully air conditioned as soon as possible. So that leaves 17%. Uh, Are they just not, uh, not working towards that, not trying to, to make these rooms uh, air conditioned? Well, I think it depends on the on the um, the status of the of the home and its ability to um, support you know AC in all the uh, in all the resident rooms. But this is just part of the solution. We're requiring the monitoring, making sure that those temperatures do stay uh, below twenty six or below. Uh, and and there is a requirement for the the homes to take action if those 
those um, temperatures are rising. And as I mentioned, there might be an occasion where a home is undergoing repairs, the AC system is having to be tempor temporarily shut down. But again, the home has a responsibility to monitor this and, uh, and take measures to, to address it. So there's the designated cooling areas, there's the AC in the resident rooms, there's, there's multiple different measures that the homes can take. Uh, but this is the first time in Ontario's history where we have 100% of long-term care homes in, in compliance with the regulation uh, and that we're, uh, this government is instituting a safe and comfortable environment in terms of staying cool. First time in Ontario's history, and I'm, I'm very gratified by the willingness of the homes to be part of this and to say that we've reached 100% uh, compliance. And obviously there's still work to be done in some of the homes to make sure that, uh, that they maintain this, this requirement, that it's monitored and the inspectors are, are, are going to be making sure that it's monitored as well. So it's all hands on deck to make sure that our residents and staff can stay comfortable during the summer heat. We'll go to the next question. Just a reminder, if you do have a question to use the embedded raise hand function. Next question goes to Holly Mackenzie Sutter from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Just hoping you can uh, clarify what in compliance means. Like, are they, what exactly are they doing being in compliance right now? And is it a commitment or an action? It, it's both. Um, there is a requirement to, to uh, have a designated cooling area that is operational. And, uh, you know, those 60% of the homes that have uh, air conditioning throughout, including um, the resident rooms, I'm happy to say that the, the goal is to exceed these requirements. Uh, and this is very good news. Again, historic moment in Ontario's history in long-term care. We need to be bringing these homes up to modern standards to the 21st century after many, many years of neglect. Uh, and as I mentioned, the, the 26 degrees Celsius is a limit that we are um, identifying and under which homes must keep the temperature. And this will be regularly monitored by staff. It will be uh, something that our inspectors will be looking at um, and to make sure that not only the designated cooling areas are, are working, um, but also that the staff and residents can stay comfortable. Um, this is exceedingly important for the well-being of our, of our residents and we take this very seriously. So it's, it's multiple layers. It's uh, the homes taking action if the temperatures do rise above 26 degrees. So there's multiple measures that homes have taken traditionally over many, many years. Those will not be gone, um, but those will be helpful. So it's a multiple uh, approach. Inspectors, staff are monitoring, reporting, um, and just the very fact that 100% of homes are now in compliance with this new regulatory requirement. I think is a really good step forward. Thanks, and just as a follow-up, some people were asking about kind of the solutions for individuals' rooms where there might be kind of issues with the age of the home. Like, why not kind of pursue um, requiring another solution? Like, they need to have a fan in the room if air conditioning is impossible or some other way to kind of keep people comfortable in their, in their own space. Well, you know, that's an important question in terms of the understanding of COVID-19 and its transmission. And, you know, I'm happy to say that um, we have a very high vaccination rate amongst residents. It's about 95%. And our, our staff vaccination is, um, is continuing to increase uh, up into the um, mid 80%, 80 percentage and higher uh, in many homes. So this is very, very positive. However, the use of, of fans creates uh, currents of, of airflow which can um, be a, an issue for our transmission of COVID-19 within the home. So we have to be very cautious and vigilant and understanding the public health requirements, understanding the science behind how COVID-19 moves. Uh, and so there's a balance to be had, um, especially as more science emerges uh, about the transmission of COVID-19. So uh, fans might be a solution in some instances, but we have to be uh, very cautious how we, how we address this using the expertise of our of our public health uh, experts and scientists. The next question comes from Colin DeMello of CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, Minister. Uh, just in another topic, um, why don't you ask about the Downsview long-term care home? Uh, you had said that the ministry and the government was looking to verify the information from the Canadian Armed Forces about the 26 deaths that um, happened there due to dehydration, according to the Canadian Armed Forces. Have you been able to independently verify that information yet? 
Well, we uh, were in contact with the coroner's office, as you know, uh, a team from the ministry met on May the 7th with the coroner's office. Uh, this is information that we are making sure uh, a proper investigation with our inspectors uh, occurs to make sure that we understand um, the, um, the background on this. This is information um, about these the 26 um, uh, reported uh, through the, um, uh, uh, the report that was not reported to the ministry. It was not reported to the minister's office. It was not reported to the home. It was not in the, um, in the uh, commissioner's uh, um, testimony, the long-term care commission testimony. So we're, we're putting this together and understanding um, what happened. And, uh, and we'll be looking for the, uh, the coroner um, to provide further information uh, and, uh, and looking at the results of the investigation with our inspectors, which is ongoing. Okay, you say the information about the deaths wasn't reported, but ministry inspectors had noted in May of 2020 that residents in that long-term care home were malnourished and they were dehydrated. So I'm wondering, Minister, how is it that the Minister of Long-Term Care, who is quite detailed-oriented, was unaware of the dehydration issue in this home? Well, we knew our homes were spiraling down. There was a handful of homes that were in, in rather desperate shape. The staffing collapsed. Was, was quite quick. And uh, that is exactly why we called in the Canadian Armed Forces because we had exhausted every other option. Um, the partnership with uh, uh, Humber River Hospital, um, the hospital was already in the home uh, before the um, Canadian Armed Forces were called in, uh, but it, this, the home was simply not holding with its staffing. So we knew that this needed to be done and that it, it was a desperate situation. And that's why we were using every resource possible including the armed forces. We'll take one final question. The next question goes to Jeff, Jessica Smith-Cross of QP Briefing. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Minister. I'm wondering how the redevelopment of homes plays into the air conditioning issue. Is money being spent now on putting air conditioning in rooms, in homes that are going to be torn down in a year or in a few years? Well, we know it's an imperative to keep our, our residents comfortable. And as I said, you know, this is historic in Ontario's history. The dollars that are being um, spent to support this very, very important, uh, um, uh, in, well, it's not really an innovation. It's something that should have been standard long ago. Um, and, and our minor capital fund, the dollars are flowing for that. There's $246 million uh, flowing to upgrade these homes. Uh, these are dollars that are well spent, in my opinion, because it really does uh, you know, need to be um, modernized. The, the, the fact that people have not had air conditioning in long-term care ever, um, you know, some homes, about 13% of homes. So many of them had started to implement this over time, but as you know, um, last summer was particularly warm and uh, this became um, uh, an imperative. So we're very pleased to be able to spend the dollars um, through the minor capital fund and also with the sharing um, responsibility with the federal government to provide some dollars to support our homes in this initiative. The redevelopment of homes is key, as you mentioned, and I'm very, very um, pleased to say that our government is committed uh, to 30,000 new long-term care spaces within 10 years. We're well on our way. We've got 20,000 new in the pipeline, another 15,000 to, to be redeveloped. This is happening as we speak. Uh, and this is, a, again, a historic investment, uh, almost, um, almost $3 billion uh, to do this. And, and what's most important is the well-being and the safety of our residents and staff. Okay, I didn't hear an answer there on if in-room air conditioning is going into those homes that are slated for redevelopment, but I want to move on to... Oh, sorry, sorry, I can address that. Of, of course, the homes that are the, the new developments, they must be up to modern design standards. That includes uh, air conditioning and, and sprinklers, sprinkler systems. This is very important. Okay, that wasn't what I asked, but I will. I want to move on to following up on what Colin asked. Downsview wasn't among the homes that was in the first wave for military assistance. It took a mandatory management order to get the full assistance from the hospital. Can you take us through what led to the issues? What were the issues that led it to be so long for help to arrive? and having that neglect and dehyd uh, dehydration happening in the meantime. Can you explain that to us, please? 
Well, we're very grateful to the Canadian Armed Forces and to our hospital partners that came to assist our, uh, you know, Ontario's um, independently run long-term care homes um, during COVID-19. And, and uh, again, an unprecedented challenge. There was a pre-existing staffing crisis that had existed for many years in these homes. And uh, when COVID-19 hit some of them, um, the staff um, was either sick, afraid, uh, or having to self-isolate. And this took out large numbers of, of staff uh, from some homes, certainly um, a handful of homes. And uh, Humber River Hospital had gone into um, Downsview uh, fairly early uh, and it was trying to stabilize the home, but the speed with which COVID-19 was moving, um, we needed the, to call in the Canadian Armed Forces. And uh, I'm very grateful to Humber River Hospital for the support that they brought um, to Downsview. Uh, but we know that uh, COVID-19 moved so fast. We, we were monitoring the homes on a, on a regular basis, daily basis in contact with them. And uh, you know, a home could be fine on the Monday, but within 24, 48 hours, they could be in, in dire shape. And, uh, and this is what happened in some instances. So uh, Humber River Hospital was in there early. Our public health, medical officers of health were engaged. Uh, and uh, ultimately the, uh, the staffing was collapsing in that home. And so the military needed uh, to come in and I'm very, very grateful for everyone who helped out at Downsview. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. Um, that concludes our announcement this morning. Thanks for joining. Thanks everyone.